In this video, I share with you details of how I make PowerPoint 365 Pro Plus slideshows as of October 2019 into YouTube videos with digitally mastered audio narration. All tools are provided free of charge to college students and comes with all current versions of Microsoft Office software, which is installed on your Windows or Mac OS device. This does not work the same on the web-based MS Office interface. After that, all is free, except for a computer and your time. Even if you do not have a computer, you can usually access one at your local library. In the classes I teach, students prepare a term report and then make a YouTube video as part of their presentation. The skills learned in this process are used for other classes. In the workplace, and most important, students gain new abilities to overcome challenges of using widely available technologies. My demonstrations are made on a computer running Windows 10 operating system and Microsoft Office 365 Pro Plus. The audio narration demonstrated here is managed through Audacity, version 2.3.2. These software programs also work in the Macintosh and Linux operating systems, except the Linux solutions for PowerPoint and Word use OpenOffice.org software called Presentation and a document editor called simply Word Processor. All of these software solutions come free of charge to you, but you need to access a computer to manage them. When you send your completed video MP4 file to YouTube, that access is also provided free of charge to you when you create a Gmail account. Hey, now we get started. For this virtual presentation, you have studied your topic, cited your sources, and collected your figures and facts. Your report is ready for prime time, and soon, your presentation will be there as well. In this video, you will see my strategy for making a YouTube video starting after you completed your report. There are other methods you can use to make your presentation using different software. This is just one way to make a good-looking video of your voice, but not necessarily a video of your talking face. A great starting point for this video is a show outline. It is similar to the outline you made when you prepared your report, but in this case, you will shorten it to include the strategies presented in the five roles for creating great presentations. Watch that video and get some ideas. If you used style sheets in your Word document, your outline can be made in PowerPoint using that document. This organizes your PowerPoint show to be parallel to your written report. In MS Word, you use style sheets as headings 1 through 9. Normally, headings 1, 2, and 3 are used, and those land in PowerPoint nicely. To import a Word outline into PowerPoint, start with PowerPoint open on a blank slide. On the home ribbon, choose from the Slides panel, New Slide Pulldown, Slides from Outline. When the Insert Outline dialog box appears, Locate the Word file with the style sheets deployed and double-click it. If it is a big document, this will take some time. Hey, it's okay. Give it the minutes needed. This MS Word document was a response I prepared to the British Columbia Forest Inventory Program. The MS Office conversion put all of my citations into headings for the slides. Delete a few of these. At the top of the document, I see some introduction materials. Delete those as well. This leaves me with the heading 1, 2, and 3 styles I had in the document, and each appears on a PowerPoint screen. It puts them all in order with formatting for the slide headers. You can see the headings from the Word document are not formatted at all. The titles are too long for easy use. Fix them. Make it flow. For the most part, you will insert pictures, videos, and images to relay your point but it will be your script you prepare to deliver your message. Experiment with these tools and make it a part of your workflow organization. You will become efficient and find ways to streamline your efforts. Hey, it's, it's worth your time. I recommend you develop your slides as a presentation, not as a new word processing document. While we are on the topic of setting up your show, I take you to the idea of inserting a video, which will become part of your show. These videos come from a variety of sources, 
but the most common today is from smartphones and handheld digital video cameras. When you make one of these and it is suitable for use in your show, you will save it to your desktop computer as an MP4 file. Other formats also work, but the MP4 is currently the most common. Remember where you stored your video and its name. Generally, I use the imagery from the videos, but rarely the video's audio. The settings happen like this. On the slide where you want to show the video, navigate to the Insert ribbon, far right to the Media panel, Video pull-down icon, select Video on my PC. In fast response, this inserts the MP4 file into the PowerPoint show on this slide. Resize the video to fit your needs. A super ribbon appears on the top of the screen called Playback. Click it. This shows the Video Options panel. The Start Item default shows in-click sequence, but you do not want that because your automated show needs to play automatically. Click the pull-down chevron to select Automatically. Click the downward facing chevron for volume and set the level you want for this video as low, medium, high, or mute. For this video, I use low so the audio narration easily plays over it. Next, set the timing for the slide to appear and transition to the next slide. This has two components. First, check the duration of the video you inserted. Click the video. Move the mouse to the bottom play bar and hold the mouse on the lower right side of the play bar. The time shows in hours, minutes, and seconds. Remember this duration. The other driving time mark for this slide is the length of the audio track you use as it plays over the video. I will demonstrate some of the audio track settings in a bit, but for now, we will assume the audio duration will be no longer than the video length. Great. We move to the transitions ribbon timing label, and type the time of the video track on the advanced slide applet. I generally give it an extra second before the transition happens. While you are here, select the transition to this slide setting you want to use as this slide is introduced. Remember to use a show consistent transition throughout your presentation. When you make your PowerPoint show, you will use the strategies you watched in 5 Rules for Creating Great Presentations. Those ideas are firm and useful. By now, you have sat through dozens, maybe hundreds of PowerPoint presentations where someone coined the summary as Death by PowerPoint. Sure, we've all seen it, and maybe that is the justification you needed to witness to make sure you never hammer that nail. You can do better than that. As you prepare your slideshow, create a design that is consistent throughout your show. Use a style for your headings and form a data presentation that can actually be understood by the viewers of your show. Viewers cannot read your dissertation in a few minutes. Your screen will be visible. Personally, I like to use videos, figures, and charts, photographs, and keywords. Think about the 5 seconds viewers will use to capture the intent of the screens you make. If it is quickly understandable, they will spend another 15 seconds reading. You will be talking about your presentation non-stop during the show. Use that mode of information transfer to make your presentation memorable. Concentrate on slide transitions and slide animations. Transitions are how you move from one slide to the next. Make the standard easy to watch, not too dramatic, and not lengthy. I like to use one transition when I change major topics, then a different and simple one for changes within the topic. Animations are used within the slide as you add a line of text or drop an arrow or outline in unison with your audio narration. Again, these should be easy to watch understandable by every viewer. Be aware of Americans with Disabilities Act compliance as you make your show. Simple color blindness is present in about 8% of males and 1% of females. This limits what is recognizable in red text that overlays a green colored background. It should not stop there. The direction of text movement across the screen and its speed can confuse viewers. 
hey, keep it simple and consistent. It may not seem obvious, but people recognize black text over white background better than white text over a black background. This reversal of text and background reduces memory retention by most people. Now we step into the narration portion of your show. I will assume that you have your show assembled and ready to make into your presentation. My approach to these narrated shows includes making a Word file where I create a table to capture slide numbers, slide images, and the script used for recording my audio to be inserted into the PowerPoint show. In order to populate the slide images from PowerPoint into the Word file, in PowerPoint use the Save As command and select the PNG file type. There are several Save As options, and when you select PNG file and OK, confirm it for all slides and the images are sent to your destination selected. In MS Word, make a new file and insert a table of three columns. Give titles to the header and number slides. Place your cursor in the image column. Then click on the Insert Ribbon, Illustrations panel, to find the Picture button. Left-click it once. Navigate to the folder where the PNG files were saved, and select Slide 1. Either double-click it or click the Insert button. The first slide image appears, but it is far too large for convenience. Select the image with one left-click. This brings up a picture format super ribbon. Click on it to see the far right side. The size panel to set the width to 2 inches and touch enter. This is the image size you need for this display. Instead of inserting each slide and resizing it, copy the image. Control C. Place your cursor into the slide 2 position and paste it. Control V. Strike the tab to make a new row. Tap again to the image column. Control V. Repeat this for each slide position. The arrow keys or the tab key will jump you from one cell to the next. Go to the top of this script document and we will change all of the slide images from number 2 to the end. There are no direct commands for this menu item that I show now. Right click once on slide image 2 and on the drop down menu select change picture to see the list of images you created and double click on slide2.png to see your image change, but it is still 2 inches wide. Repeat these steps for each slide in your show and in only a short amount of time they will all be updated to accurate images so you can prepare your script while viewing the images for each slide. This makes your slideshow images consistent for your scripting authorship. The script column is where you will type your script for your video that you make. The script is how you make sure to report your data in a conversational manner with your audience. This is not the place to read your report to viewers. It is where you discuss it, share relationships in your data, and show interesting highlights that may not be stated in your report. Ad-libbing your narration is not recommended. Type out what you want to say, edit it a bunch, and pass it on to someone who will edit it for you and use their suggestions. I'd recommend writing your narration to convey one to two slides at a time. It is much easier to deal with a single slide audio track than to try to set timings with one long audio narration. I often combine two or three slides into one audio track. But more than this, and it gets complicated. I do not worry about my timings to the show at this point. There will be time to align your timings soon enough. You can use the PowerPoint audio recording tool to put your narration into audio files associated with your show. It sets the audio tracks to match the slides you make them for. You can make one long audio track and transition from one slide to the next. You can also make audio tracks one slide at a time. The speed of making audio narration this way is attractive. However, you cannot clean your audio because of misspoken words, inconsistent volume levels, 
or create repeats of sections you stumbled on. You cannot master out background noise you do not want in your show. When you record it, it's a done deal. I use a program called Audacity to record my audio narrations. It is a free program through the GNU licensing protocols, and it works in Windows, Macintosh, and Linux operating systems. I recommend you spend a couple hours to learn how to use this technology. It can make you sound great. And did I mention? <laughs> it's free. As we step into Audacity, I open a file I created and called Silence. It is literally a recording of nothing for about 30 seconds, recorded on the day and in the room where I make the recordings used for a slideshow. We may not realize that we hear it, but background noise is always around us. For me, it is the sound of my computer fans or even the car on the road. Audacity uses these sounds of so-called silence to erase the same sounds from the audio tracks recorded. Make your silence recording of 30 seconds as the first track you record. Save it and then begin making the slide audio recordings. Save this one, name it as slide 2, and then do number 3. <laughs> you get the idea. On the menu, I select the silence file. Using the keyboard, I depress Ctrl A for select all. Navigate to the effect menu where several commands are available. We start by clicking Noise Reduction. Click the upper box and in a couple seconds, the profile is interpreted. Save the file as you close it. Your computer is now holding that silence record in RAM memory to apply to all additional slides in this series. I do one silence file for all my show tracks that are recorded on the same day and starting in the same time period. I have two monitors, so I run Audacity on one screen and display my script on the other. As I prepare Audacity, I make sure my microphone is attached, blue snowball. I move the recording mic icon to the far right maximum setting. Along the transport toolbar, I click the red record button. Recording starts with two horizontal bars. Depending on your recording device, these may be identical, or they may show different left and right tracks. I always start my recordings by reading out the slide number, pause for a couple seconds, and then start dictating from my script. When this track is completed, use your mouse to click on the black square stop button. Take your mouse to the file menu, close option. A warning applet opens to confirm its closure. Do you want to save this project before closing? <laughs> click yes. Give it a name and place it into the folder specific to this project. The file will be saved as .aup file, which can only be read by Audacity. It also creates a data folder associated with this AUP file. This is why I make sure this project is in a unique folder for this specific project. Generally, I will record all tracks consecutively naming each one to match the script file I created. When all are recorded, I turn back to the first file I recorded and open the audio track. Control A selects all. Navigate to the effect menu. Select the noise reduction option. This time, click on OK at the bottom of the applet. It takes a few seconds to remove the background noise. And you see right away how the track looks very different, cleaner. <laughs> it sounds better too. Slide 17. <laughs> Check this out. This is raw audio with no touch up made. Hear the background static and low volume? We will do better than this. Command controls on the top of the screen jump to play the track, pause it, adjust volume, and load and a load of additional commands. And a load of additional commands. You can hear the difference now, right? I quickly repeat this process for another track. Select all, 
Migrate to the effects and select Noise Reduction. My audio track is scrubbed of background noise. At the beginning of my audio recordings, I always state the slide number. You can see where it starts and ends. Use your mouse to click and drag this audio selection area. Navigate to the Generate menu and select Silence. Garbage is gone. Remove the timestamp marker by clicking on it. Easy zoom in by holding down the Control key and rolling the mouse rotor. Highlight one quarter second of silence, and on the keyboard, type Control C. Got it. Now select the entire lead in where the slide number once was seen. Control V to paste a perfect quarter second of silence lead in. Now I scroll through the track and find long gaps I want to replace with one quarter second of silence. Highlight and Control V to paste. Generally, I put two quarter second gaps, half a second, between sentences. Finally, I find a peak on the track that goes above the peaks of the rest of the track. I want to reduce that peak without making it sound bad. Highlight the bigger sound events. Click and drag. Effect menu, amplify command, and enter negative one on the amplification line. Click OK. The selection became quieter and fits better with other sounds. Continue through the recordings to repeat this deamplification process for the entire track. Hey, well, on this issue, make your beginning and ending selections of your noise reductions or amplifications at the zero baseline markers. If the sounds were increasing as they approached the baseline, then make the end of the selection show the same pattern. This makes your changes to the sounds smoother and consistent with the audio patterns you use as you talk. When the peaks are all generally arranged around the same level, you make the entire track balance to a normal level. Control A to select all audio on this track. Take your mouse to the effects menu, select Normalize. You are prompted to set a peak amplitude. The default is negative 1.0 dB decibels. Keep that setting. In the GUI menu, select the Fit Project to Width button to see the entire audio track. You will see if there are some areas that peak at higher rates than others. You do not need to do them all to be right at the top of this scale. If you do, your audio will sound really bad. On this track, I see the first seconds all peak substantially lower than the next set. Select those first seconds of this track. To the effects menu, select Amplify. Set the new peak amplitude line to negative 1.0. Click OK. Very quickly you see these peaks are all in line with what follows. You could do this again from 25 seconds to 50 seconds. When making the start and ending selections, I look for a point that is right at the baseline level, neither climbing nor dropping. This makes the adjustment unnoticed by listeners. When the selection is made, go to the Effect menu, select Amplify. Set the new peak amplitude to negative 1.0. Click OK. I recommend you do not get carried away with setting them all to negative 1.0. Set them in a normal range, just like people do when talking. There are ups and downs, and all is fine. On the File menu, select Save As. I always retain the original recording I made without any modifications. <laughs> this is a little insurance policy I keep in case I flub up something as I edit. Then I go to the File menu, Export. Export as WAV file. I put all WAV files in a specific folder where I can locate them easily when putting them into PowerPoint. PowerPoint cannot read at the Audacity files directly. They need to be one of the many types PowerPoint can read, and I select WAVE for my audio narration. Click Save. The information window can be filled or left blank. This track is now a WAVE file and ready for importing into PowerPoint. But don't do that yet. The normalize command is a huge benefit for your video so that users do not have to adjust the volume on every slide. The volume differences become a big deal when teams provide their audio sourced 
from different recording devices. Clean the background noise from all recordings. Normalize them all to the negative 1.0 amplitude and they will sound as if they were all recorded together. When all tracks have been prepared and each saved as a WAV file, you are ready to insert them into your PowerPoint show. Open the slideshow you prepared earlier. Go to the first slide where you have audio recorded. Remember you numbered your slides and stated the slide number when you recorded it? Huh. This is where it all comes together. The mechanics of the process start on the Insert Ribbon, Media Panel. Click the Audio button where Audio on My PC is clicked. Locate the WAV file you created. When it arrives, you click and drag it to an unused space on your slide. This part is very important for your show. With the audio track selected, find the Playback Super Menu. It only appears when you have media selected. You will see the Audio Options panel. Click the hyperbox for Hide During Show. Pull down Start Menu to Automatically. And click Play Across Slides. While you are here, hover your mouse over the play track on the audio image and take note of its audio duration. You will use that number shortly. Select the Animations ribbon to the Advanced Animation panel and click on the Animation Pane button. The audio track is the bottom of this list and it needs to be set to the top. Manually click and drag it there. Narration happens as your visual animations progress. Click on the Transitions ribbon. You checked the length of your audio track so you could set the advanced slide time to about one second longer than the audio track length. It is the time used as this slide will advance to the next. While on the Transitions ribbon, if you have not done it already, select your Slide Screen Transition Effect. You can play from on the Animation pane to see how this slide will look and sound. Remember those settings on the Playback Super ribbon? If you select the Play Across Slides radio box, you can make your audio track play through multiple slides. If, for instance, your audio recording lasts for two minutes, you could set this slide to play for 1 minute 30 seconds and the next slide for 30 seconds. Altogether, it fits this audio recording's duration. You will experiment with these settings and find the combinations that best suit your ever-changing needs. Force Resource Analysis System Software, or FRAS, relies on new approaches to forest land data interpretation, their application in timber harvest timing decisions, and land value determination. FRAS contains in a structure a built-in mechanism for timber price predictions in real values. It is the data system software to schedule financially optimal land management activities and to determine a parcel's market value, one timber stand at a time. Complicated in its architecture, it is simple in function, flexible in adaptation to your long-term needs, and unified in the consistency of its approach. Operating with traditional and familiar precursors, the program will advance your perception to a higher level of professional imagination. So let us start with how the program's basic structure is composed. Animations on the show direct how and when lines of text appear, which image becomes active on the show and where they move. Mild animations call attention. Too many distract from the message you deliver. Make them meaningful and convey your intended message. Spend your time to put the images in sync with your narration. You do this by selecting the text or an image to animate it using your selected animation. Then, when instructed to animate, you will take your mouse to the animation pane and right-click on the animation controller. I select Timing and the applet opens. I start with Previous, delay the number of seconds to make it match my audio. I can set the duration, which is the speed of the item's entry to the show. And get it good and click OK. You will stack many items in your show and make the timings match perfectly to your narration. 
The best advice I can offer is to practice with this. You will use this program or one like it for a long time. This is not the program I was using when I started playing in this arena, but the techniques I learned when I started are still used now. That was the technique of learning. There was a big change introduced between PowerPoint 2016 and 2018. It is the insert ribbon, media panel, and screen recording. This is the first time MS Office has included this feature. It allows you to record what happens on one of your screens. It makes it into an MP4 video and saves it into your PowerPoint file. It will record audio and video together, but as I use it, I turn off the audio capture. Instead, I use Audacity to do that portion of the effort. As you watch the videos I have made, you see screens of software use. This is how I make this tool an active part of my lessons in video. There are a lot of techniques to master with MP4 video timings, animations over the video images, and timing the playback settings. Spend time with this and you will like how you learn it. Spend time on each slide. Make the show one slide at a time. You think you're ready to go, but you need to watch your show on your screen. Slideshow ribbon from beginning. It must play completely without you clicking on anything after from beginning is selected. Make sure it is ready for prime time. When your show is ready, file ribbon, export. This looks a little different from left side panel create a video. I am selecting full HD. 1080p. Use recorded timings and narrations. That should cover it, so I click Create Video. This prompts you for a location to place your MP4 video file. When you like the name and location, click OK. This MP4 option only became available with MS Office version 2016. Before this software release, the Windows Media Video WMV, was the best option. Now, MP4 has taken that position to make better video and audio quality combinations. It will take time for your computer to make your video. Generally, my computer with settings like I have demonstrated here takes about as long as the completed video lasts. Sometimes it takes longer, especially when I have videos embedded into the show. I recommend you do not use your computer for anything else when it makes your MP4 file. Hey, let it work. When the file is completed, watch your video. Make sure it is everything you want it to be. If you are a Macintosh user, this would normally be where you export your video to an MOV file. In one of the updates to Macintosh PowerPoint software in 2015, there was a bit of an error and the videos all came out as MOV files without audio. In 2019 release, Microsoft and Windows did not get it right again. Hey, I have a super simple fix to this case. Save your Mac PowerPoint file as a PPTX file saved to a USB drive. Put that USB disk into a Windows computer with PowerPoint 365 Pro Plus. Open it and go to the file ribbon. In the info area, click on the Optimize Media Compatibility button. It takes a little time, but even this show of 19 slides took only 90 seconds. Once it completes, watch the on-screen slideshow, Slideshow Ribbon, from beginning. Watch it all and align the differences between your Mac and Windows machines for fonts, audio tracks, and transitions. You might have to make some adjustments, or it might play perfectly. I have done this with Mac users for years, and when I used Office 2010, it generally took less than 15 minutes to convert the Mac file into a Windows file. In 2019, the transitions have completed in about a minute. It is not a problem. You can make it happen. You don't even need to admit to others that you used a Windows machine to make your Mac work to create a video. <laughs> Shh. When you are ready to post your video to YouTube, 
you will open your account automatically created for you when you created your Gmail account. This YouTube account is used for training videos I make. Click the upload button. See the subscription portal. Click and drag your MP4 file to the drop point. Uploading starts and you can find the pull down label where public, unlisted, and private options are shown. Public means anyone can see it. Private means only you and selected users can see it. But unlisted means people you share the link with can see it and play it. Public and unlisted are the settings I most suggest for the students I work with. This way, it can be used for scoring in class. Advanced settings allow you to enter recording date and other settings. Back on the basic info, you can enter a brief introduction about your video, a title, and even tag words. Under the upload status, you will see that your link address is already displayed. You can copy it now, or later. This video showing here still needs more time to complete, but you need to give it the time stated, or the video will not display. When it is up, watch your video again on YouTube. You can send the URL for your video to those who you want to see it. The description you wrote and its title will be seen by everyone who views it. Video creation using these tools takes me about 3 hours per minute of video. That means that a 25 minute video takes me about 75 hours to complete. That does not count the next step of using my scripts to enter the closed captions for my videos. Thankfully, that is not a huge time vacuum. That video is coming up next, so watch it and use it. You are so super close now that I can tell you that of course you will do that too. Closed captioning is part of the Americans with Disability Act compliance and helps your efforts in many more ways than just that. The link for that one will appear on this channel. Follow it. The five rules for creating great presentations also shows on the screen right now. Click it to follow.